The tunnel grew colder. Miller and I were close to the surface now. Soon, we'd climb up into the howling wind to find our way through whatever nightmares were waiting there. My long journey was nearly at the end. But would I have the courage, the will to see it through? Hey guys, Mugen here. I thought I'd uh, give you a, a little review of a game that I just picked up called Metro 2033. Now, I was kind of waiting on reviews from maybe some major sites before I decided to pick this up, but I, I kept waiting a couple days and then it didn't, it didn't happen. So I was kind of just like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to get it anyway. And I'm glad that I did, because this game is pretty fucking fantastic, frankly. Now, apparently it's made, at least in part, by some of the people that were involved in the making of Stalker. And frankly, when I heard that, I was a little uneasy, because Stalker, while, you know, they had a lot of ambition and some good ideas, that game... Well, all of them, the, it and all the other various incarnations of it, are really just like big, fat, buggy messes. Uh, they're, it's just a mess. Like, they're just buggy as hell and just not really that much fun in the end. So when I heard that, I was a little bit worried. But after playing this, I have to say that, you know, those, those worries were misplaced because this game... While, I guess, in a somewhat similar setting, I guess, to Stalker, I mean, it's in Russia, uh, the game is absolutely nothing like Stalker. Um, this game is not open-ended at all. It is... If you took Stalker and then you sort of, like, combined that with Half-Life... Metro 2033 is what you'd get. Because that's that's basically what this is. It's a very linear... Uh, you know, you're just going down sort of a straight shoot towards the end. And that's okay. There's a place for that, too. At first, you know, I thought, I don't know if I'm going to like that. Because, you know, I love Fallout 3 and all that. But there's something to be said about a handcrafted, uh, you know, sort of cinematic experience. It's something that... While, you know, I love games like Fallout 3, you just, you can't have it in a game like that. You can't have the same level, the same cinematic quality in a game like Fallout 3 as you can in a game like this, where every single, you know, sort of sequence is hand-designed for you to, to see certain things. It's, you know, pre-designed to turn out a certain way, and that makes it more... Well, cinematic. And I think that's really the game's most striking feature, for me anyway, is that it's you can tell every single thing you see is handcrafted. Nothing in this game feels like it's randomly generated. Every tiny little detail, and that that's the thing, the game is just so chock full of tiny little details everywhere you look. It's so rich and it's so polished. It's it's crazy. It's I mean it just feels like one of the most polished, finely detailed games ever. It feels like you're in an actual other world. And it's not often that games do that, but this this is one of those games where it really feels like you've been picked up out of your chair and transported somewhere else. And now you're just in for the ride. I just love all the little things. Like, you know, when you're in certain areas where you need to use a gas mask, you got your gas mask on, right? And the only way you can really tell how many filters you have left is by looking at your watch, which is like a physical object. You, you look at your watch and it shows you how much filter time you have left. And another thing, just another small little thing, the closer you get to needing to change out your filter, you'll, you'll start to sort of breathe heavier and gasp for air. So it's like you know, you'll be walking along, and the closer and closer it gets, you're like, <sighs> and then you'll see him, like, pull out a filter out of his pocket and then, like, place it on. Just just little stuff like that. They didn't have to do that. 
But they did, and it just makes it so much more enjoyable for me, so much more immersive. If you have your gas mask on and you get attacked several times, you'll start to get cracks in the uh, gas mask, in the uh, little view shield. The more you get hit, the more cracks you get. And then later on, if you find more gas masks on the ground, then you can, like, swap them out. Just, just little stuff like that that makes the game just more unique, I guess. The graphics are fantastic. I mean, they are fucking top-notch. There's some really cool effects where you'll be walking around in the, the tunnels, which is where you'll spend most of your time in the game, is these little underground metro tunnels. It's very sort of claustrophobic, but it's cool. It's, it's not, not a whole lot of games are feel quite like it. But they got these really great effects, like certain lighting effects, like these little sort of sparkly bits of dust that are floating around in the environment that, I mean, they look fantastic. Most of the things revolve around cool lighting effects that just you don't really see very often in games, but other than that, there's like, I mean, the textures are real. they all seem like they're extremely high resolution. That could be just me, but, I mean, everything looks like it's really high resolution. And then, like I said, every environment is just full of these little details, these little things that look like somebody, and I guess they were, hand placed there by somebody. It looks like a real world that's been lived in by these people. The voice acting is generally excellent. The sound, in general, is a little bit hit or miss. Uh, the monsters, you know, the, the creatures that you encounter in the game, they all sound fantastic, but the guns are... They all sound kind of weak. They all feel kind of weak, too. That's that's probably my biggest complaint with the game, is that the shooting mechanics are okay, but all your guns feel a little bit too weak for my taste. It seems like enemies take way too many bullets to go down, and th when you're firing them, they kind of just feel like... They feel like pop guns half the time. Now, if you're shooting a, a fucking shotgun, it should... If it's a big shotgun, you know, it should feel like it's gonna, you know, knock your arm off. Not this sort of pew, pew, you know what I mean? Like, it's just sort of underwhelming. The game has a lot of interesting characters, and the story is well told, and will keep you interested for the length of the game. Which, admittedly, isn't incredibly long, at maybe ten hours or so. But it'll be a very memorable ten hours. The game has excellent pacing as well, and it... It kind of goes back and forth between moments where you'll be partnered up with, you know, someone you encounter in the game who will help you on your quest or guide you to the next area, and then something will happen and you might get split up and you'll be on your own for a while. I have to say this is one of those games where that's very well done because the moments where you get split off from whoever you're working with, you really feel like, man, now I'm really all alone. The, the, the sense of solitude in those moments is very strong and they have a stronger emotional impact than you might expect. So basically in summary, if you like immersive, atmospheric, single-player shooters and are willing to sacrifice the open-ended nature that we see in a lot of shooters these days in exchange for a much more polished and cinematic experience you probably should check this game out. If you're a fan of games like Half-Life, you will like this game. I, I promise you, you will like this game. It's not often that games leave such an impact on me that after I've turned them off, I find myself thinking about them. Metro 2033 is one of those instances. We often talk about how people enjoy games so much because they're looking for escapism. If that's true, I find it ironic that I get so much pleasure out of escaping to a world in ruins. A world where the word hope lost its meaning long ago. Perhaps it's because it's portrayed in such a believable and compelling way. At one point in the game, a little girl asks her mother to buy her a pet rat so she can play with it. And her mother responds that they can't afford to waste precious food in such a childish way. Somehow I find that more compelling than fending off Hellspawn with an Uzi. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Metro 2033 is a game that has character. 
something that can be said of so few games these days. Do yourself a favor, check it out.